to LCD model, it you know, when we talk about surrounding learners with meaningful assets, one of the first questions we often get is, well, okay, now we're going to be creating all these different learning assets. How do we know that they're going to be perfect, right? How do we know that every learner is going to be using, you know, all of this great stuff we have out there? And so we tell people, well, by design, that is not the point. Every learner is not going to use every asset. Mm -hmm. You're going to do your best guess to hypothesize and experiment with the, your diverse learner personas. That's a, a great thought process. And you said something that was very interesting that was, you know, make some, uh, you know, hypotheses. And, 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 and I think that it's really interesting that to suggest that people think like a, a, a scientist, right? A training scientist, an L&D, instructional design scientist, and really kind of think outside of the box and, and test things and see what works um, for the organization. Uh, I just thought that was really, that was really interesting because that's coming up more and more in articles about um, this, you know, think like a scientist in, in L&D. Yeah, L&D has always been scientists. It's just a matter of, you know, have we adjusted our science for today's tools, technologies, mm -hmm. or are we, you know, still stuck 30, 40 years ago? Well, it's that human condition, right? Change is hard. We've always done it this way. We've always done, you know, so I, I think that that, um, that is really good advice to kind of get out of that. Oh, well, good is good enough or that this way is, we've always done it, right? And I, I think something really resonated with me at the, when you started um, talking, Crystal, and it was a, a, around like that perfection piece, right? Like I think in general, in, in the L&D space, it can be, you cannot want to put something out to your full audience until it is so, so precisely accurate that, you know, that to, to come up with that, that training or that, that resource for, it may be months of development, right? But I think what is so interesting is, is getting more out, trying to just, just meet those personas, like you're saying. And, and if it's not a hundred, if it's not, you know, quite, quite dialed, that's okay. Imperfect is okay because we're also moving forward. We can always iterate. We can learn. Um, we can gain feedback actually from our learners, tweak it and make it a little bit better, make it even more meaningful. And I think being a little bit more on the technology side behind that, it's like, how do we give learners the the tool the digital tools to do that right to be able to put something out really quickly and then be able to take feedback from those learners take taking that feedback and re-push it out in a way that's even more effective and is going to to reach that audience in just a, a, a little bit stronger way that's so crucial and i love that you're bringing that up because it's one of the things that stood out to me about wise tale and why i think it's so important to question assumptions everywhere. So we like question the assumptions of how do we design learning to begin with? And, yeah. you know, questioning how, what, what is an LMS supposed to do? What is it supposed to look like? And to have it so start out with social from the beginning, I think that's really important what you're saying, because when we talk about building hypotheses and being iterative, the reason for that is we we can use our intelligence and we are really smart but we're still not like you're still you still don't ha have to have the the hubris or the arrogance to say you're as smart as every learner in your organization and so if right. you have a platform that can help you collect the real life feedback and case studies and how people are engaging with the best hypothesis the best foot forward that you put out there mm -hmm. and you know, that just, to me, that's like such a big modern learning um, principle is that you're really crowdsourcing um, from the intelligence of your company. How do we make this better? Of course, we've done our work up front, but just because you do your work up front, that doesn't mean your work is done. And I think that's like a really big shift for L&D professionals because we almost everything about us is one and done. We create a class and that class is one and done for our learners. We create the class and we don't touch it for two, three years. 
until we think it needs an update. And when it needs an update, we kind of just go about it haphazardly. Whereas like in the LCD model, we have a whole action focused on upgrading existing assets that helps walk through some of these types of elements of that you would bring to modernize something. So it's just, I think there this big shift from L&D is static to L&D is dynamic, that it's a huge one. And I feel like both what we both are doing from a movement standpoint is really pushing L&D to keep being way more dynamic than we have been in the past. Yes. And I think, I mean, we live in such a content rich world where it's where everything is, is happening and it's, you know, 30 seconds, you're looking at something and then it's changing the next day, the next week, like everything is always, we're moving really quickly as a, as a society, things are changing quickly and our learning needs to keep up with that space. The, the times where you put out, um, you know, a, a training a piece of training content and you update it in two to three years, like it just, it doesn't work. That's not relevant anymore.